Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering today's video is we're going to be looking at statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we're going to be finding some reactions. And this will be our 15th part in the series. So what we have going on today is this picture shown on the left. And it states that neglecting the radius of this pulley up here at B, determine the tension in cable A, B, D, and the reaction here at support C. So first things first, this reaction at C is a pin. So that means that we are going to have a horizontal and vertical reaction here. Now, what we're going to do is that we are going to have to determine how much tension is in this cable because that will help us get to this reaction at C. And plus also the problem states that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to slice through this entire picture right here through this cable and through this cable here. Because we are saying that neglecting the radius of this pulley, we are assuming that this is a smooth pulley so that whatever tension is on this side of the pulley, tension T, will be the same over here as well. So what that means is that if we cut this tension in this cable right here, this will be T here. Oh, not a plus sign, it's supposed to be a capital T. And that means that the tension all the way through the cable is the same and even on this side at point D. So the reason why we're doing this is because this reaction up here will pretty much only be dealing with the tension in the cable. The reaction down here at C will be doing dealing with this entire member along with the tension in the cable and this 150 newtons over here. So what we are going to have to do is find the tension first and then our reactions here. So this is going to be kind of my working free body diagram. I am not going to concern myself with anything above my cuts here and the tension in the cable. So what I'm going to have to do is I am going to have to determine my slope for this uh, portion of the tension in the cable from A to B, which we are given dimensions here of 125 here. And then from A all the way to all the way up to B will just be 225 plus 75, which is 300. So if we find the hypotenuse of that triangle, it will just be 125 squared plus 300 squared square rooted. And I guess it's 325 there for that slope of that tension from A to B. Alrighty, well, let's throw on some assumptions here for our reactions at C, since it is a pin, I'm going to assume that C sub Y is going in the downward direction, simply because the two tension forces are going up and I'm assuming that they're gonna be overpowering the 150. And if you assume it wrong, it's perfectly okay, your answer will just come out as a negative. And then I'm also going to assume that C sub X is going to the left here, well, because this tension portion is vertical, this is vertical, this one has a vertical and a horizontal, and since it's going up and to the right, that means that the horizontal will be going to the right. So I'm assuming C sub X has to be going left to cancel that. All right. So what we're going to have to do, since we have uh, so many unknowns here, and that T is exactly the same, we are just going to sum moments about our reaction at C. By doing this, C sub X and C sub Y completely drop out from our equation, and we are just left with these T values here, which T is going to be the same at each location. So let's go ahead and work on this. And what I'm going to have to do is break up this up into the right T force into its vertical and horizontal components. So let's start with our horizontal component here. So it will be T times 300 over 325 to get it into the horizontal. And then I need a distance because it's acting at point A. I need a distance to get it over to C. Well, this since it's a horizontal force, I need a vertical distance to drop it. So that's 175 millimeters. It will be rotating clockwise about C. So that'd be minus based upon me taking counterclockwise as positive. Alrighty, then let's do the vertical one. Once again, it will be rotating clockwise about point C. It'll be going like this about point C. So I need to take T and get it into its vertical component, which would be the 125 over the 325. Remember, you're always going to be dividing by the hypotenuse of your little dimension triangle and multiplying by the version or the dimension that is measuring in that direction of the component. Since it's vertical, using vertical here with 25. 
And then I need a distance to get it over to C. Well, that will be this distance right here of 225. And then we have completely taken care of the forces at A. So let's just also include this T version right here at D. This one will be rotating counterclockwise about C. So it will be plus T times its uh, dimension over to C, which is 75 millimeters. And then lastly, don't forget about the 150 down here. This one will also be rotating counterclockwise. So it would be 150 positive Newtons times 225 millimeters to get it over to C. And that's all I would have equal to zero. So what we can do is we can simplify what's being attached to our T variable here. And I'm going to take um, the T over to the other side eventually. So let's just simplify this version down. So I'm going to have minus 161.54 T for this first portion, minus off 86.54 T for this second portion, and then of course plus 75 T, and then plus 33,750 for the 150 times 225 equal to zero. I'm going to combine the T's, take them to the opposite side because they're going to be negative on the left-hand side. So we end up with 33,750 is equal to 173.08 T. So T is just simply that 33,750 divided by 173.08. And that gives me 195 Newtons of tension force in my cable. Alrighty, so now that I have my tension force, what I can do is that I can sum forces in the x to give me c sub x, and then I can sum forces in the y direction to give me c sub y, since these are now my only remaining unknowns in each of those directions. So let's go ahead and work on that. So let's just go ahead and we'll do the harder one for first, which is summing forces in the vertical direction, and by harder I mean it's not that much harder. So we'll take our vertical component of our t, which is 195 newtons, times 125 over 325. It will be positive since it's pointed upward, minus the 150 down here, and then plus this other T portion over here, which is plus 195 Newtons. And then of course I have C sub Y pointed downward, downward, so minus C sub Y. That C sub Y is the only unknown in there, so when you solve this equation, it comes out to be 120 Newtons. It came out to be a positive number, so that means that my assumed arrow direction of downward was correct. Alrighty, so then we have one more reaction to do, which is C sub X. So I'm just going to squeeze it in over here. So I'm going to take to the right as positive, summing everything in that horizontal direction equals zero, and we really only have two forces here. That horizontal component of my T, which is 195 Newtons, times 300 over 325 to get it into the horizontal direction, and then minus C sub X, because I have assumed to the left, equal to zero. Well, C sub X pops out to be 180 Newtons, and it came out positive, so I know that my assumed arrow direction of to the left is correct. And that's how you would solve that particular problem, finding the tension force in the cable, and then finding the reactions at um, joint C. So it just took a little bit of understanding um, what they are meaning by neglecting the pulley and knowing that is a frictionless pulley, and then that the forces on each side of the pulley are going to be exactly the same. So I hope this video is helpful. And if you want to see more problem solvers right, please check out the other videos on our channel, as this is the 15th part in this series. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all of that does really help us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.